Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see the structure of ASME Section 8, Division 1. We have all these courses available on our Thinkific platform. To learn more about these courses, register with the link given in the description. Let us move to the structure, which is very important. So, if you see the left hand side, okay. First of all, how the section it start? It start with introduction. So, like any book, if you read or any report you read, you, first thing you will find is introduction, because that will give you a brief idea about where to apply that code, for which kind of equipment, whether this code is applicable, not applicable, what to do if certain rules are not there. All these things will be covered in introduction. Also, the structuring part of it, like subsection A, subsection B, subsection C, that is also briefly covered in introduction. So, how that code is structured? First, you will see the introduction, which will talk about the scope part and the general requirement. Subsection A is more towards all the general requirement related to design, material, welding, inspection, your hydrostatic testing, pneumatic testing, proof testing, all these general requirements will come into subsection A. This is the main part of ASME section 8 division 1. This is the biggest, like it will have the more pages assigned to it. Okay, subsection A, very important. Most of the design clauses you will find in subsection A. Okay, in subsection B, you will find the methods which are used in fabrication of pressure vessels. So, how to fabricate, how to weld, how to give the joint efficiency, okay, how I will weld so that I will have good joint efficiency. All these requirements will be covered in subsection B. Subsection C is more related to material part. In uh, code, you will find different different subsections for different materials okay now anybody can uh, write in chat box what are the different materials i'm talking about me uh, like material name anybody can mention mention in the chat box what are the different materials possible in pressure vessel group carbon steel right edema ss stainless steel right Carbon steel, low alloy steel, high alloy steel, SA516, Narendra, right? But SA516 is a particular material. I'm talking about the material name like carbon steel, low alloy steel, stainless steel, okay? These are stainless steel is actually the high alloy steel, okay? So these are the hester alloy also, lots of different, but you know, mainly we use carbon steel, low alloy steel, or stainless steel. These are the major material which are used. So, for all these materials, carbon steel and low alloy steel are covered in same section that is UCS. Then by reading the name, you will see that, okay, UCS means carbon steel related requirement, but it's not like that. It's, it includes carbon and low alloy steel. For both material, what should be your post weld heat treatment requirement? When you have to perform impact testing, all that thing will be covered in material subsections okay apart from that there are mandatory and non-mandatory appendices so mandatory appendix will talk about some mandatory requirement which you have to perform and which is not covered in a b and c okay like any example which you see in mandatory appendices which we cover in mandatory appendices any example Just think, any example for which we cover acceptance criteria for UTPT, yes. Flange design, yes. Great. So, mandatory appendix 2, which covers flange design, that is a mandatory appendix. So, mandatory appendix, like the name itself suggests, if there is a flange to design, which is a non-standard, then we have to follow mandatory appendix 2. Okay. There is no escape. It is a mandatory requirement. 
opposite to that, there are some non-mandatory appendices that will have the procedures which not mandatory for us to follow. If I have a certain different rule, I can follow that. Okay. But as a designer, if code is giving something even as a non-mandatory, it means to us as a mandatory because if I follow certain other rules, it will be really difficult to justify to AI why I took that procedure rather than selecting that non-mandatory appendix procedure which is suggested by code. Okay, And that non-mandatory appendices, there are very high chances that in future it will become mandatory. So non-mandatory appendices are such that there are some certain procedures which are identified by ASME and they are good. They are just reviewing it after getting proved by 10 or 15 years if they are in operation and they found that these, it is working also good, then they may include that in mandatory appendices. So it's a available methodology for us, which we can directly go and pick. So that is always beneficial as a designer. Okay. So now what is the structure? Introduction, subsection A, subsection B, subsection C, mandatory and non-mandatory. This is the main structure of code. So if I have to see some welding related requirement, where I will go? I will go to subsection B. If I have to see some requirement related to material, very specific to carbon steel, if it is a general material requirement, I may find in subsection A, like how to do char -P. char -P impact test, if I am doing, what should be my specimen size? All these requirements you will find in general requirements, subsection A, okay, because it is general for all the materials. If some requirement which is very specific to the material, like Any example, post well treatment, right? Post well treatment is very specific to material. So it will be covered specific section. So like if section C will cover related to that, you know, the requirement related to that material. So I hope it is make mandatory appendices and all you have to see what is covered. Then only you will be able to know that what are the things which are there and what are the things which you know I need to follow. So unless you are aware what are the rules which is available and mandatory, you won't be able to know that, you know, there is no sequence or something like that. You, how, you know, they have found methodology and included. So there is no sequence. So if you want to see what are the different mandatory appendices, you have to go and check what is available. Okay. I hope that structure is clear to you. 